Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. For today's job we have some line boring to do on a tilt bucket from a 35 ton excavator. We have the tilting hitch, we have two positions on that to line bore and we also have the two positions on top of the bucket to line bore. This is the main pivot point of the tilt bucket. So how a tilt bucket works, an excavator will grab a hold of a hitch the hitch is attached to the bucket via a 80mm pin, also using two hydraulic cylinders to control how far it tilts. The ears on the top of the bucket that the pin goes through, they're in pretty good condition, they're not overly worn out. Being that the pin is locked into the bucket, it doesn't do any turning. The hitch side of it, it's in really bad shape. So look at it by eye, it's in pretty good condition. But you throw the calipers over it and it has a significant amount of wear in it. Side to side in the bush, it has about two mil of wear, but up and down, it's nearly 10 mil of wear. You could kick a bush from the other end of the workshop and it'd land in that hole. So it's significantly worn out. Not only are we gonna line bore both parts, but we're also doing a floating pin upgrade. It's an upgrade we do to a lot of tilt buckets. They just seem to survive four to five times longer than the standard configuration. So I'm gonna turn the hitch over, take the bucket back outside, flip it on its side, bring it back in, get them set up for line boring.
Righto guys, so we've completed the line boring on the hitch part of the bucket repair. I only had to take out about a mil and a half of material on the back side of the hitch because it wasn't too badly worn out. We did have to take about four mil out of the front side of the hitch because that's where all the power for the machine gets transferred from the hitch into the bucket. So that is the point that cops most of the punishment. We did have to take out more material than I'd wanted to, but in order to put down a nice fresh layer of material or a couple, we do need to clean that up and get that running parallel. Now that we've done that, we're gonna start welding.
Right, oh guys, so we've completed all the boring and the welding on the hitch. We are going to let that cool down now and we have to do the boring on the bucket. Because it's going to be a floating pin upgrade, we only need to bore out the bucketies. We don't need to put in any material. So we need to bore it from 80 mil, which is the size of the standard pin, out to 95 mil to fit our new bushes. And we also need to do some facing because the bushes we're going to be installing are a flanged face bush.
Six. Six. Hang on a minute. Guys, we've completed all the line boring and the facing we needed to do. We have installed the bushes, so the next thing we have to do is machine up the new pin. The piece of material we're going to be using for our pin, it's a piece of induction hardened 80 mil chrome bar. All we need to do with that is put it in the machine, true up each end, and then put a chamfer on it so it can guide nicely as we put it back inside the bucket. We've also got some grease caps to be made, so we're going to get into that now.
Righto guys, we've completed all the repairs we've done on the bucket. We've finished our floating pin conversion. The reason why we do the floating pin conversion and the flange face bush conversion is on a standard configuration, you have two bushes and they are mounted, well, inside the hitch, one there in the back and also one up the front. The pin is actually locked into the bucket using a bolt arrangement similar to that, but it's back here, it can't turn and the thrust washers that are used, pretend that's a brass thrust washer, there's one in the back and then there's one in the front. And what happens over time is when they're greased, they attract dirt and dust. The grease turns into a grinding paste and it very quickly grinds those thrust washers paper thin and they end up falling out. The thrust washers are there to stop the end float, so this moving front and back in the bucket. Once they wear out, the bushes then start to walk out of the hitch and then they start to break apart and then you end up with a complete failure as this bucket experienced. What we have done is we've removed the brass thrust washers, we use flanged face bushes so there's two hardened faces working against each other and the pin can also turn in there as well so never is the pin locked in one spot it can rotate with the correct greasing every morning, as all operators should do on a tilt bucket. This modification will by far outlast the bucket. The first one of them I did was in 2015. I do keep in contact with that customer on a regular basis, and to this date, he still says he has no end float, he hasn't had any wear there. I'm sure this customer will be very, very happy with this upgrade. This bucket spends probably 90% of its life on the machine. You don't want any wear in a bucket like this. Because it is a final trim machine, so it is used for GPS work to final trim house pads, drains, roads, stuff like that. So there is a GPS sensor here on the back of the bucket. It is very important to get these things right, otherwise you end up with discrepancies in your heights as you're cutting or trimming. Now all the customer needs to do is put back in the tilt cylinders, plug on his hydraulic lines and it can go back to work. The bores where the pin, the bores on the bucket side of the repair is oh, fuck. <laughs> significantly where, uh, significant. Fuck. We do need to flange. Oh, yeah. We don't need to do. Oh, fuck me. Righto, guys. So we've completed the pin up. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck me. <sighs> Starting again. Sure. So we're going to get onto that to control how far it tilts. We just need to bore them out to suit our bushes. I've installed all the bushes. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You want coffee? What? You want coffee? Yes. Don't make coffee. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We're in this together. So. <laughs> Is that curly? Fucking bird. <laughs> it's very off putting. <laughs> you poked yourself in the eye. <laughs> You've really done it. That's some shit anyway. Get my light. It's your head in the light. <laughs> your face looks really shiny. Does it? Like magical, like Edward off Twilight? Yeah. Like diamonds? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> like titties. <laughs> Wait, where's the nipples? Oi! Bring me, bring me, bring me. 
Are you watching good? Rock go to it. work. Go to Rock work. It. Drop it. Homeless? Hey, you'll wreck your teeth, you idiot. Drop it. Homeless. <laughs> right then. Come on. You want me to pick something?